Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking particle logo reveal using Adobe After Effects and Particular. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a logo. So I'm just using Illustrator to create a logo and I've just created a composition 1920 by 1080 pixels. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the line segment tool and I'm just going to draw a line down. Hold shift to make sure that it's straight. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that I click on the selection tool. I'm gonna to hold option on my keyboard and I'm just going to draw a line out probably around about maybe 38 pixels um, from the other line. Doesn't have to be perfect. Once you have that, then you have to duplicate that 16 times. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now to duplicate, you press Command D or Control D to be able to do that. And once you have that, then what you need to do is you need to highlight all of that and you need to find the transform option. So if you can go to Windows transform to bring it up and then you need to put it to an angle of 300. So once you have that, then what we need to do is we need to highlight all of that again and I'm going to press Command C to copy and then I'm going to press edit paste in front. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that rotation to negative 300 degrees and then we're going to do that one more time so i'm going to press command c to copy again and then i'm going to go edit paste uh, in back and then i'm going to reset that angle back to zero so now you have three sets of angles and so now if i zoom in what we want is this area in the middle so to create the logo what i'm going to do is i'm going to highlight everything by pressing command a so now that I've got my grids, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the shape builder tool. So this tool here, and I'm going to draw out my triangle. Now try to be careful here not to go over any of the pieces of the triangle that you don't want selected. So now I'm happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to press command C to copy and then I'm just going to paste it. And the only other thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the field to black so that you can actually see it. So now once I have that, I'm going to take it into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition and I'm just going to call this Emitter. So I'm going to run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document and I'm going to go at about 30 FPS. You can leave the duration around 10 seconds, 15 seconds, that'll be fine. I'm just going to press OK. So now that we have that, the first thing that we have to do here is we are going to import our logo. So all I have to do is just go right click, go to import file and then I'm going to put it inside of After Effects. So it doesn't really matter which uh, option you pick because there's only one uh, layer in there. So now I'm just gonna drag it to my timeline and the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press S to scale it up. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm also going to hit this button over here to continuously rasterize. That will make it sharp. So now once we've scaled up our logo, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add some color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for an effect called gradient ramp and I'm gonna get some colors from Color Hunt and put it into here. So this is the color scheme that I'm using from Color Hunt and I'm gonna go with a light color and a darkish color. So I'm gonna put the light color at the top. So now the next effect that we need to do here is we are going to add the bevel alpha. So this will give us a 3D look. So I'm just gonna increase the edge thickness to maybe let's say eight, and I'm just gonna increase the light intensity to about one. Maybe I'll drop the edge thickness to about six. So now we've got that kind of metallic look and that's looking pretty good. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to pre-compose this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to layer and I'm gonna go to pre-compose and I'm gonna call this logo and I'm going to make sure that I move all the attributes into the new composition. So now I have another new uh, composition called logo with my logo in there. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a mask. So I'm just going to come and grab the rectangle tool, make sure that the logo layer is selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a rectangle Maybe something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but once we have that, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the properties over here and I'm going to increase the mask feather to about 70. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the mask path. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch, make sure that I'm on the first keyframe, go to about six seconds. And then what I'm going to do is 
I'm just going to move this. I'm going to hold shift and move it over until it's off that logo. So now if we preview that, you will see that it will create this really nice um, kind of reveal animation there. Now if you want to go faster or slower, you can just adjust these keyframes. So now what we need to do is we need to create another new composition. So I'm just going to go back to my project settings and I'm going to hit the new composition button. And this is going to be called logo animation. And again, we're going to leave all the settings the same 1920 by 1080 pixels. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the emitter and place it in this area over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that that's a 3D layer. So if you don't see that, you can always press toggle switches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new solid and I'm going to call it background. I'm just going to put it underneath. And while I'm here, I might as well apply the effect called gradient ramp and I'll just keep that on there for now. I'm just going to go to color hunt and I'm going to pick the darkest colors in that color scheme. So now once you put those colors in, I'm just going to adjust the start of the ramp just so it's a little bit darker, just something like that. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another new solid and I'm going to call this particular and I'm going to just take the eye off the emitter just so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm going to search for the effect called particular. So just a reminder that red giant is the company that makes trap code particular so if you'd like to download it the links will be in the description below so once we're in particular the first thing that we have to do here is we're going to change a few of the settings so we're going to go to the emitter settings and we're going to change the particles per second to it's going to be 100 and then another three zeros and then another two zeros so it's a pretty big number and yeah, you're gonna get this warning. So just press okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the emitter type to a box emitter. We're gonna change the emitter size to XYZ individual. And we're just gonna change all these values, the X to 50, the Y to 50, and the Z to 50 as well. And the other thing that we're gonna put in here, velocity random, we're gonna change that to 90%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the emitter type back to layer. And now we're going to open up the layer emitter and we're going to find the layer that we're working with. So that's the emitter layer. And then what we are going to do is we are going to make sure that we're using particle color here, RGB particle color. And we are going to make sure that it's in particle birth time. So now if you've done that correctly, now it will affect that layer and you've got this cool kind of growing moss thing happening so that's looking pretty good but we're going to change it up and make it look even better so i'm just going to close the emitter and we're going to open up the particle settings so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to change the life and we're going to put it to 1.5 seconds we are also going to change the life random and we are also going to change the feather to let's say 25 we are going to change the size. We're going to bump it up a little bit to about six. We are going to change the size and we are going to change the size random to let's say 100%. Then we're going to come down to size over life and we are going to choose just this kind of uh, cutoff kind of preset there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the opacity random and I'm going to change that to let's say 10% and then the opacity over life I'm just going to choose this preset down here and cool so now we've changed it up a bit and now we've got this kind of growing logo reveal so we're still going to make it look even better so we're going to close up the particle settings and we're going to come down to the lighting so now once we've closed up the particle settings, we're going to come down to lighting and what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the shadow lets and we're going to make sure that we enable them. And then what we are going to do is we're just going to change the opacity of the shadow let to two. So we're going to bring it down a little bit and we are going to go to the adjust size and we're going to bump that up to let's say 120. 
So now once we've done that, I can close up the lighting and we can go to the environment. And so we need to change a few things here. So the first thing we're gonna change is the gravity to negative 100. We are going to change the wind X to also 100. We are going to change the wind Y to negative 50. And we are also going to open up the air turbulence and we are going to change the effect position to 150. And so now if you've done that correctly, you will see what's happening here. Now you've got this kind of, uh, they're nearly like tentacles kind of, you know, coming out of that part and then growing to become the logo reveal. So that's looking pretty cool, but we're gonna change it up a little bit more as well. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add some drop shadow to this effect. And what I'm gonna do with the drop shadow is I'm just gonna bump up the opacity to let's say 65. I'll leave the direction, um, but I'll change the distance to zero and I'll change the softness and I'll bring that up to about 65. So now what's happening here is you will see that there is a bit of darker area here as this uh, kind of tentacle thing grows and expands. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to add some curves to this as well. So we're gonna do a simple S-Bend here with our RGB uh, layer. So you don't wanna go too crazy here, but just give it enough to, you know, kind of bring out the colors in here. And that's looking pretty good. So now once we have that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go back to our project settings. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag the logo to underneath the particular layer. So now once we've got our logo in there again, now what we have to do is we have to look for an effect called linear wipe. And we are going to change a few things. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the direction or the angle to 270 degrees. We're gonna change the feather to about 70 degrees and we're gonna hit the stopwatch for transition completion. We're just gonna set that up at 100%. And then we're gonna move forward in time to about six seconds. And then we are going to put that back to zero. So now if you've done that correctly, now you will see the logo kind of expand with the trap code particular and it kind of all blends in together. So that's looking pretty cool. The final thing we need to do is just the scale in animation for the logo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be on the logo over here and I'm just going to, once the animation has finished, I'm gonna set a stopwatch for scale. And then I'm gonna move forward in time to about, let's say eight seconds. And then I'm just gonna bring that down to, let's say 80. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight both those keyframes. And then I'm gonna go to animation, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then I'm gonna hit the graph editor and I'm just going to make sure that I bring those two points a little bit closer together. So it creates a snappy kind of animation. And so now you can see it starts off big and then it will kind of shrink down. And then because we still have 15 seconds to go, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring it back up to let's say 100. And so that will kind of fade it back up to its original starting point. So now once we have all of that done, the final thing that we have to do is the last touches to spruce it all up. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is we are going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna search for the effect called noise. And I'm just gonna make sure that that's on top of everything. And so I'm gonna bump this up to let's say 8%. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the particular layer and I'm gonna search for an effect called glow. And what I'm gonna do with the glow is I'm just gonna bring down the glow intensity to let's say 0.3 and I'm going to bring up the glow radius to let's say 100. And so now we've just added some glow to that. And so what we can do also is on the logo layer, we can also add some glow over here. So again, we'll do the same thing. We'll bring up the glow radius this time to maybe like 80 and we'll bring the glow intensity to let's say 0.3 and then we'll duplicate that glow and we'll bring 
that to about 0.1. And so now we've got this really cool, nice looking glow that goes with the kind of the tentacles of the trap code. So that's looking good. And the final thing that I added here was uh, a smoke overlay at the back. So all I did is I just imported the file. And so it's just a piece of stock footage from Pexels. And I'm just gonna dump it in behind the logo layer. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to change the mode to let's say overlay. And I'm just going to press T for opacity to bring it down to let's say 40%. And so now if you've done all of that correctly, now you will have this cool kind of reveal of this logo with this nice uh, animation. So anyways, guys, that's it for this quick tutorial on how to create a Trapode particular logo reveal animation. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you guys next time.